Okay, it's 6.33. I'll call you off the meeting to order. Approval of the agenda that may be amended. So we'll see anything, Michael, that you need amended here. Um, uh, yeah, Lucretia came by the office, said that she has a credit card policy procedure um, that needs to be signed. And this is because we're going for Moscow and Urban Community Bank. Okay, we'll put that underneath all the business. Okay. All right, is there a board of liquor control? I don't know if I saw anything in here. There's nothing in this packet. I don't see anything. So we'll, we'll strike. Uh, Lucretia is on. Lucretia is on. But it's just an, it's not showing. Lucretia, is there a board of liquor control? There isn't, but I also have a financial uh, controls document, which has to be signed by the select board. That's the credit card or just? The no, that's separate from the credit card policy. And, you know, if you're going to ask some questions, I would prefer to be. If I could be earlier than later, so why don't we move? Why don't we move um, the uh, board of liquor control to uh, take that out, but put in those to the credit card and the financial locations for number Perfect. seven? Why don't we put it before the recreation? We'll put it before sure. the recreation. We'll put that yeah. at six, and then we'll put recreation at seven. Great, right. thank you. So, um, all in favor with the changes made. Um, approval of the minutes. I've got June 24th, special select board meeting. Um, Chris, Rob, and myself. Um, this was with the, it was a special meeting because we had to set the tax rate and the child care and a whole bunch of other stuff that was in here. So I didn't see anything on it. That was the emergency. That was the 24th. That was the 24th. Yeah. That was the special. Motion to approve the all in favor? The emergency select board meeting, um, June 24th at 1 p.m. That was a 6.30. Oh, okay. And um, this was the one that we, uh, executive session 1 p.m. I believe this was with uh, Great Golf. It was Kathy Schofield, Michael State was on. We haven't had one of them in six or seven yep. weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to approve. Yeah, motion to approve. Monday, June 24th at 3 o'clock. This was the same day as the other. We just approved. We just approved two. We approved. We had three meetings. We had one emergency at one. We had another emergency at three. We had a regular one. It was special. And then we had an emergency. Yeah, we had three that day. Yeah, we did have three. This was with CHB after meeting up with Great Call. Okay. Yep. Motion to accept all those minutes there. Okay. In June 28th, we had a special select board meeting. This was the one for um, errors and admissions for Velco. Mm -hmm. And then the press release for the $25 million rate of grants. Errors and admissions select board moving on to executive session. Okay, all the favor, June 28th. So next we have uh, open to public comment. I'm going to look at the Zoom first. Everybody here, I can't see. Is there anybody from the public on Zoom that would like to ask a question and that's not on the agenda? Not seeing anyone step up. I'm going to look. You're not here for that. Are you here to say something? No, I'm here to listen. Okay. Tom? I'm good right now. Thank you. And you're here with the fire department, right? Okay. So nothing from the public in the open section here. Um, number seven, we're moving up to six. And this is the credit card statement, Michael. Appreciate you. you want to take it from here? Yeah. So basically the last few years we've had a debit card with Mascoma and now switching to community bank. They are, we're back to a credit card. And prior to handing out the credit cards, uh, the, the procedure has been that we have the cardholders sign the policy. There was nothing changed on the policy. This is a policy that we've always had in place when we had peoples and we had the credit card with them. We had this policy in place. Nothing's changed. The only thing that has changed is the list of current cardholders. Um, so I've updated it to reflect the current, um, employees, 
Um, I don't believe we have a fire chief yet. So we do. Will, Close we do. do we? Well, we will. Okay. When we do, I will update the list with his or her name and they will get a card because right now they don't have a card. So, because they don't you have a card. So, I just, uh, you know, if it is okay with you, if you would sign, it would need to be signed by you so that it can be adopted. So, is there like a floating card for the office? There is the office card, which is listed there that has the highest credit limit. And just so you know, the total of the credit limit for all the cards equals 25,000, which was what was approved by the select board, oh gosh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when we first got credit cards, because uh, People's United required us to sign a maximum uh, limit. And that was the limit that the select board chose at the time. Um, I didn't see any need to raise that limit. Um, but certainly if the select board wishes to, we can do that. But this credit card company does not have, like with community, it's different. They're a third party. So they do not require us to have any kind of resolution or anything signed that gives us that, you know, commits a maximum uh, credit card limit. So I think the 25,000 has been enough. I think okay. that... Um, Everybody's used to debit cards, which is a little bit different. So it's going to be a little bit of a, you know, getting used to again to the credit card. Um, but um, I think it it worked well. So I don't I don't see any reason to change it unless if you would like to. So could I get a motion to accept the updated credit card policy, which the update is including. Um, the authorized signatures or authorized users for the credit limit of 25,000. So, Michael, are you using the credit card for some of these permits that are larger? I, I will. And what I've done in the past with Moscoma is if it exceeded my uh, allowable amount to spend, is I could reach out to Moscoma to raise that. I think Lucretia was saying that. Uh, process might be a little more difficult now with community bank, but not impossible, maybe. No, it's not. And I was on the um, I was on the website. I've got I finally got that all set up so that I can view everything online. Um, it looks relatively simple to change the credit card limits. So um, we won't know until we hit the first one. Um. Do we get any perks from it? I was going to say, it should be some benefits associated with it. Actually, I think this card does have some cash back rewards, which you, it sounds great, so but that system. causes, that actually does, um, can create a little bit more of an accounting um, yeah. headache, but maybe it's a good one to have. So we'll, we'll see. We're going to have to, we're just going to have to, you know, go along and see how. Not, maybe it's something we can donate those if it's miles or perks we can don them donate them to a philanthropic cause if we find necessary and well, it's miles so it doesn't create it's not miles it's not miles it is cash back i believe cash reward so it's like a oh gosh like two point something percent maybe yeah, and i don't know if it applies to all purchases some purchases i i haven't gotten into the nitty-gritty of the of that yet so i think as mm -hmm. we use the card We'll, we'll see what, what we comes. put it into like the rec department for you know, uh, and then we have a kids that yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the fire department, or whatever, on that side too. That maybe we could split it, and then the senior citizen. I don't know how, how much we do. I don't know how much it is. If we only have 25,000 a month, we're really not doing that much or yeah. a line of credit. Mm -hmm. well, so I don't find it necessary pay it off before. <laughs> Do you have? Do you find it necessary to make? I mean, you only have four thousand dollars. I I rarely use it for anything okay. over two thousand. To be honest with you, okay. the only the only time I've ever exceeded that was pay a permit, and even then, they only allow the you to go over for like what an hour or something. Maybe it's longer than that, but well, that was really <laughs> minimize it again. I just. Well, about ten thousand dollars is pretty much 
So mm -hmm. I just don't know if you probably should have more. Just in case, like if you have the option that the town needs to purchase something, and you know. You, you, you you have me on I mean, that. let's be honest. At you this point, that I'd rather get some kind of reward for yeah. it yeah. than I would be to put seventy-five cent stamp on the thing. We had a whole strategy around. around never mind, pay for the check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easier. You put everything on it. Yeah. I don't buy a whole lot, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Okay, I just want to. I just large you purchases, can, yeah, yeah. Right up, you know, if you, if you can, or maybe right. just extend the one for the town office. The, yeah, the town office. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, office card, so that they have the ability to go out and go have the crash. The town office card is the card that's used for most purchases and certainly the larger purchases as such as computers and okay. things of that nature. So we use that for, and you know, we're going to try it out because I've got a computer order that has to go in for the lister. So that's going to be a nice order. So we'll see how that goes. So why don't we uh, accept this for now? Accept this for now, but look at extending the time. We can go on and on. And well, why don't like, you? Can you pay the electric bill with a credit card? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Your cell phone. Yeah. Can you pay the all that? If you're paying the money, anyway, points up yeah. percent. No charges. You can spend twenty five hundred dollars a month, you know, on each account you have over this thing. Yeah, yeah, I do it. Trust yeah. me. So <laughs> keep in mind that any expense, <laughs> any expense has to have a receipt, and if we are going to do something with any kind of rewards, we have to have some documentation. So it just keep that in mind. Yeah. We'll we'll so let you. We'll keep you posted. All in favor of accepting the credit card, the the, the existing credit card, um, yeah, bylaws, whatever you want to call yep. it, with the added whatever. Credit signatures. Hi. Then the next one that you have with us. The next one is an internal financial controls checklist for municipalities, cities, and towns. It is required by uh, the state auditor and. I will be very honest with you. This has not changed over the years at all. And um, <laughs> with all of the transition, the last time I had this signed by the select board, I'm sorry to say, was in 2020. So I apologize for that. Um, but uh, this questionnaire is always part of our audit. Our auditor requires it as well. So we we're doing it. We were just doing it on a different level, which was one of the reasons why I, too, would... Uh, but I figured now is a time to get back into the um, into the practice of doing this, and it's it's due. It's supposed to be done every June thirtieth of each year, so uh, it's just there. It's you just more of a it. financial background check, whatever checks and balances. Yeah, checks checks and balances to make sure you look down that list and you look to see, yeah. you know, the answers. And I think we're in really good shape. I don't think that we have. I think we're pretty well. We have a lot of checks and balances in place, so. Um, is it called a disclosure? What is this called? Financial? No, it's a financial control. internal financial controls checklist, so you know, that you're I, you're making sure you have things in place. The financial internal financial controls. Okay. Yeah, motion. So we'll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a basic checks. You doing oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yep, okay, yeah. Yep. So it's saying that they follow this the standard financial. Yep. All in favor? It makes sense. Hi. So just make now sure one of you signs it, please. Yeah. So we're on to um, the record talk. Um, Lisa, I guess maybe you can meet Lisa or. Um, Emily, you can introduce Andrea, and then we can get this thing kicked off. Sure. Do, do you guys want to give me to give you a little just background on the project before we sure. uh, yeah. Andrea? About um, two, two years ago, the Planning Commission um, had indicated that they really believed that we needed um, to update our recreation master plan. We have a recreation master plan. It's, I don't know, about 15 years old. Um, and... Um, the commission felt a we needed to update the plan and also because we know that we need a, a new pool that is part of the uh, plan we should take a look at you know where we want the pool to be located um, what kind of facilities we want and um, related to the pool how we want the pool to um interact with other, you know, our playing fields and other rec facilities, the playground, and then 
Um, the last piece, I guess, in this puzzle is the fact that the town, the existing town hall um, is becoming available and is going to be converted to a rec center slash senior set center slash community center. So we applied for a municipal planning grant. We applied twice and both times we were denied. Um, I spoke with um, the um, uh, person from the state and he just said that, you know, it really didn't kind of fall in for the types of projects they fund. So I went back to the planning commission and they said, well, you know, we think this project's really important. We have this re reserve fund that the um, select board put aside. Um, let's, you know, go out and get some pr uh, proposals and, you know, just move forward on our own. So we put together, Emily, myself, and Will put together a scope of services. We vetted it with the planning commission, the rec um, commission, and then we solicited proposals. We received two proposals, um, one from a firm called the SE Group, I think in the Burlington area. And then one, um, Abby actually had said to me, oh, when I was in Bethel and I was um, deputy assistant town manager, we did a recreation master plan and we used this firm, Vermont Integrated Architect um, out of uh, Middlebury. So we reached out to them and we received a proposal from them. We also reached out to a couple other firms who declined. We had asked Nicole Kesserling and she had indicated that she would love to be part of a, a project proposal and she is in fact a, um, a sub on the VIA proposal, but that it was not something that she would take on as a prime. So um, we received the two proposals, the planning commission reviewed them and felt strongly that the VIA proposal was the better proposal. We then went to the rec commission and Emily is here so she could add. And um, they too agreed that um, it, they felt it was the stronger proposal and both um, commissions felt that this was an important project and it was something that they would like us to move forward to. So with that, um, Andrea Murray from Vermont Integrated Architects is here and I'm happy to make, I guess, a, a brief presentation about the firm, their uh, approach to the project and um, answer any questions. And, uh, you know, I was excited to learn that Andrea had actually worked as a um, camp counselor for um, Killington uh, many summers ago. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Andrea Murray from Vermont Integrated Architecture. Thank you, Lisa. I, first of all, I owe you all an apology. I know we were on the agenda for the last meeting and I signed on at like 7.05 and so I had the wrong time and I sincerely apologize. <laughs> Promise it won't happen again. Uh, I, I thought, and tell me if this is what you would like, I'd just tell you a little bit about our firm, our approach to your project, and uh, who our consultant team is, uh, but I'm happy to not do that if you've all read the proposal um, in depth and just answer, go right to questions. So what, what's your favor? I think you should just give a little background because there are people in the audience that are probably listening. Great. Not, um, not the long story, the short story. <laughs> <laughs> the short story. Delighted to. Um, so I uh, am a lifelong Vermonter, as is my business partner, Asher Nelson, and we founded our firm in 2011. Um, and this part is, I think, in, important. We named our firm Vermont Integrated Architecture because we are both from Vermont. We care a lot about this place, the natural places and the built environment and all the kind of tender places in between. Uh, the integrated part is that our, pro our projects are not about us. They're about you and our consultants and all the users of the buildings and spaces we help design. And uh, it makes for a much richer, better project when at the end, so folks say, hey, they really listened to us. They got it right. Uh, and then the architecture part, hopefully, is, is obvious. Um, we've done a lot of master planning around the region. And I like to think of master plans as kind of roadmaps. Uh, if you have a master plan that is not flexible, 
it gets put on a shelf and we don't use it. So we try to create tools that are really useful for you and your community, not just when they're complete, but that you can use it as you move forward. So if step one in your master plan is to, let's say, relocate the pool, um, we want to know what step two likely is going to be. But we also want to be able to skip to step three if that becomes more urgent. All of our master plans take into account a number of factors. Um, we, we care a lot about your money and we know that your community cares about its money as well. And so we need to provide you with budget information, both upfront cost and life cycle cost information about the investments you make. And so that can include simple things like repairs and maintenance and how do we get on top of that, make decisions about materials and things that will last a long time, or about materials and things that are really inexpensive and get the job done right away. So we work with you to establish those priorities. We also put a big plug in for sustainability, uh, energy efficiency, and being kind to our natural environment. So that can both save you money, but it also does favors for our environment. And we can provide energy data, carbon data, and other information about site moves, about building moves, um, all sorts of design strategies. We've worked with uh, a lot of stakeholders on various municipal projects before. And I think this is really important that we build support for your project from the, the beginning and, and all the way through and that we listen carefully to the rec committee and users of the rec park and um, that that will they'll help make your lives easier as you begin to execute the project. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, finally, in terms of code and regulation, land use planning, permits, things like that, we deal with this all the time. And we'll, we will be working with Edmund Kesselring. So Nicole and Patrick and, and their team um, will certainly help with site and land use permits, uh, everything from stormwater, wastewater, uh, drainage, um, you name it, uh, potable water, Things, things of that nature. We're also talking a lot these days about resiliency and how do we design sites and buildings that are um, sustainable from a, a disaster type of point of view or a you know significant storm surges, things like that. So we're working on lots of strategies to help communities plan for those events. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then finally, I would just say we have in our office a deep background in construction and procuring construction services. So even though we're just talking about planning at this time, we can help you figure out how you're going to get it built. And I'm sure you have a lot of experience as a community with various projects, but there are many different delivery methodologies for construction. Uh, there are different kind of ways to get it done. And so we can help you with that. Um, our consultant team, you just passed it um, right there, but we're, I guess they're all, they all start with E. Uh, we have Edmund Kesslering for civil engineering, and I know the town has worked with them in the past. Uh, engineering Ventures for structural engineering. They have an office in uh, Lebanon and in Burlington, uh, one of the larger structural engineering firms. Uh, engineering Services of Vermont, Mechanical, Electrical, and Fire Protection as Necessary. Uh, they're based in Rutland. And then Henry Erickson as a cost estimator. So as we start to prioritize projects or phases of your master plan, we're also going to come up with some order of magnitude budgets because sometimes that has bearing on what you decide to do when uh, and in what order. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Um, so yeah, so we're a relatively large firm for the state of Vermont. Uh, we recently um, took over the operations for McClay Architects in Waitsfield. So we are 18 architects strong, or I should say 18 people, 10 licensed architects, and seven designers and an office manager. And that was the quick, quick down and dirty. 
Um, do you have any questions? What are some of your more successful projects that you've seen into completion lately? Yeah, um, a great question. We, we do all different types of work. Um, we recently, I should say, for the past several years, have been working on a master plan for Kimball Union Academy in Meriden, New Hampshire, so not too far away. And we are about to complete two new dormitories, um, complete construction for two new net zero energy dormitories. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting project. It's, it was about $19 million in construction, and those dorms will be uh, operational come hopefully August 1st, but certainly for the beginning of the fall semester. Um, I think one of the projects I'm most proud of are, well, there are two municipal projects that I'm very proud of are the Waterbury Municipal Center. So that is the library, town offices, um, and historical society in, in Waterbury. And that was completed, gosh, nine years ago. <coughs> But it was something that we got involved in after um, Tropical Storm Irene. Uh, they were displaced because their offices, well, the town offices were down near the um, the old uh, hospital and mm -hmm. they needed a new facility. So we worked with them and the community to not only design a facility that combined them with the library on higher ground, uh, but that one that was extremely energy efficient and had all sorts of resiliency measures built into it. But even more rewarding, there was a bond vote that passed um, pretty handily, and uh, we stuck to that budget. <laughs> um, the other one municipal project I'm, I'm quite proud of is the Shelburne Library, a new library for the town of Shelburne. <coughs> and that was a quite ex extensive project, um, but that one was not as easy. Uh, it required something like three dozen community outreach meetings and really building support in the public for that, that project. Um, we're currently working at VYCC, Vermont Youth Conservation Corps up in Richmond to do a master plan for them. Uh, it, it's a nine I think it's nine or 10 buildings on a rather large site, everything from, you know, workspaces to dormitories uh, to infrastructure on that one. Um, and that one, I don't think any pieces of that will start construction until next year, but it's been a, a long and interesting project. Great, thank you. We love municipal projects, I would just say, because you guys think long term. And, uh, you know, so we're planning for 25, 50 years from now. And I think that's probably true because when I worked for the Killington Rec Department, um, I think you have the same pool, <laughs> which was a long time ago. Well, yeah, one, yeah, one. One. Yeah. <laughs> so things haven't changed a ton. Just the one. <laughs> so leading, leading off with that, um, I mean, the, you're in front of us tonight. Um, this is the amount of money that we're expending and where it's coming from, Lisa. I think you're muted. Can't hear you. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean, Jim, the amount of money? Um, so what is the next step from here? This is asking for the board to approve to move forward, correct? Absolutely. Yes, this, correct. And the steps that are going to go moving forward will include doing what? Yeah, I could talk to that a little bit. So yeah. um, the scope of services that you just passed, I think the first thing we're going to do is an existing, well, first thing we'll do is meet with the rec committee and make sure we understand the priorities for the project. Uh, and that can be the rec committee and any others who are interested. And we prepare what's called an OPR or the owner's project requirements. So we want to make sure we understand the success factors for the project. We'll, we'll assess along with our consultants, 
Um, the existing buildings and their systems, mechanical systems, we're also going to look at the site uh, and the, the property in terms of what's developable, where there might be drainage issues, um, you know, really try to understand what the conditions of the property are and where different uh, things could go, different program elements. We'll produce existing building and site documentation, which will be the basis for the master plan and kind of de designing new elements going forward. We will um, also prepare a code and regulatory review and a permitting review, and we'll confirm kind of some overall schedule items. Uh, that's sort of the background work that we do before we actually start the planning and design work. <clears throat> and the design work will start by creating some concepts for folks to react to, some different ways that the site um, could function. And we hope to get a lot of input from the community on that. Uh, that's item number two. And then once we have your input and your kind of feedback, we will move into the final part of the plan which is to develop the projects a little bit more. So create one cohesive master plan, but within the master plan, there are apt to be individual projects, whether it's the pool or renovations to the old town office building or the pool house or parking or whatever it ends up being there. You know, we like to put these into sequential projects. Like you wouldn't want to, um, you probably want to do the new pool before you take the old pool offline. So we'll help you kind of prioritize and sequence those along with creating budgets for each of those phases or sequences. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then uh, we'll prepare a final report and, and present that to, to the community. Uh, and there will be a lot of information. There will be some tools that the rec department and the town can use to kind of check things off that need to be done um, to, not, you know, understand and monitor what upcoming operations and maintenance needs will be, not just the construction cost, but what will we need to budget for operating this new pool equipment. Gosh, we could probably use something much more efficient than what we have currently. Maybe we can save some money there or things like that. Um, we're looking to start this uh, to do the be beginnings of the assessment in September and the majority of the planning and design work through the winter with a, a final date at some point in March. Definitely a better and a more comprehensive answer than I could have given, although we, yeah. did, we did develop the scope and that their proposal is based upon the scope that we put together. So and, and so, Lisa, how much money is in that fund for the planning commission? We set up about three years ago. A planning commission um, for projects to be planned out. Well, Michael is actually going to come to the planning commission um, on Wednesday and give us a number, but I believe it's about 125,000. Right. And this is the funds that the fund we've put in yeah, for a couple of years. And this is their first, you know, we told them to go out and find something. This you know, is like, really the yeah. first project um, first. that we're using. We hit it up two or three times for money yeah. to be paid back yeah. into it. Yeah. You know, we. We talked about it at length, I think, at the planning commission, then again at the rec, you know, you know, we could do the incremental approach and say, all right, we, you know, we know we need a new pool, let's figure out where it should go. Or we could do the more comprehensive approach and kind of come up with a... I think you're right, Lisa. I think, and then the other side of it, we could waste that much money without planning, okay, easily. So to me, I think it's better we come up with a comprehensive plan for that entire parcel, what we see the future looking like versus, hey, let's put a new pool in. So we actually have, yeah, and we actually have three pots of money, it looks like. There's the Recreation Capital Fund. Um, that was just, that was for the pool, wasn't it? Well, no, there's a separate, so there's a separate. How much is in the recreation capital? Fund? Recreation capital fund. There's 109,000, yeah. and then and there's the special fund for the planning, and then there's a special fund mm -hmm. for the planning. Yep. Hold on. 
It's called a special project. Oh, yeah. 119,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then there's but then there's a recreation pool fund. That's right. that pool yeah, is the actual pool. like pool. It, well it, it's kind of for every day's like how much is in there now? Four and a quarter every year. Okay. And that's kind of the money going towards um actually Eventually building the pool and whatever. And we started this fund three years ago for the special planning, whatever, and giving them time to figure a project out. I mean, this is seventy-eight thousand. You call it eighty thousand um, dollars, and they have almost one hundred and twenty in it right now. One nineteen. Um, you know, I'm not going to step in the way of. You said the planning commission is doing it. They want to do this project. I believe they're coming out on Wednesday and. The rec department is uh, want to get into this, and I'm with Chris. You know, I'd rather get everything attacked at now and have an answer by 2025, and um, start making some moves. I know I haven't been in the pool area because my kids are in their 20s now, but you know, back they then, old people in that I know they did. <laughs> my kids they walk by. Yeah, 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 I, I walk by. It. But that 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 bathroom is. The pool's in better condition than that now. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. And, uh, you know, I would, really, I would really like to see some things happening. And without looking into it and getting the public's information and feedback, you know, um, I really think that's a big part of it. Um, I was just going to throw one thing out there. I know we had one group that was thinking about bringing the grade of that all the way up to River Road. I just don't see how that could ever get done. Um, that would cost the fortune and the compaction of the dirt and everything else. So I think it I think you know, it'd be nice to see what a study see does. What, see what and what design and yeah. see with what's there yeah. realistic so, numbers. Yeah. Just, you know, realistic. So um, I just wanted to hear go ahead, I just, Lisa. Want, I just want to point out one thing that when we um started this project and we were seeking public funds we had a very large you know um community outreach component because that's always mandated when you go after grant funds and in this proposal we took the approach that the consultant will help us preparing the visuals and the information but that um we you know my planning recreation we would actually do the public re outreach ourselves as kind of a way to, with support, of course, from the consultant, but as a way to kind of save some funds. So um, that's why you don't see a huge public component in this proposal, but it's not that we don't, we're still planning to do it. We're just planning to yeah. do it um, internal, so. Good, and I think that's good. I think yeah. it's really good. I just wanted to hear what the scope was and yep. pricing there, and then get to the money is in, a fund that we had set up and we had told them when they find a project mm -hmm. yeah. to come to the board and I'm thinking this is the project that they're yeah. I think it's a good improving and I think it's great I think it's good between the planning commission and rec departments yeah. just specifically with it so you know, and I gotta tell you like I have driven down prior to the 4th of mm -hmm. July the pool is being Emily that pool seems like it's being used a lot more maybe it's just this year or whatever or but it seems to be used a lot more if you want to kick in, Emily. Yeah, I don't know if it's because it's been so hot, but it's definitely been a lot busier. And I think busier with non-res. I think non-residents are starting to realize that they are allowed to use the pool. Um, I think there used to be a conception that it was only for residents. So, um, like today, there was probably outside of camp an additional 20 people in the pool at 3 o'clock, which usually no one comes during camp hour. So it's been busy. So, um, Any questions on Zoom? Um, folks that are um, Zooming in, I think I saw Patrick Cushion and some others. Um, oh, no question. I was just... Uh reiterating what you're saying is i've never met i've never seen an area that's perpetually as wet as the bathrooms at the pool and for years had wasp issues so i think this is a wonderful plan so as wet as the pool uh yeah. karen moran do you have a question no thanks okay 
I think everybody else is town folks mm -hmm. here. I'm going to go into the audience. Any questions on this project? I just think it's good to have a master plan. I, I think it's the whole thing should be laid out and do it in phases as we can afford it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get a motion to accept. That's what you need right now. I think so. Yep. 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 Can I make a motion we accept the proposal as written, as presented by the Planning Commission and jointly with the um, Rec Committee? And we move forward. Second. Topic second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks a lot for your time. Can't wait to Thanks. see it. Thank Aye. you, everybody. <laughs> Emily, while right, you're on, you got anything else to tell us about the Rec? Um, camp's been great, and the kids love the van. So, <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone loves the van, and they're very curious where we got it. So, it's no, been a awesome. Don't tell them. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <Bad air conditioning. laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Right, thank you. Okay, so next up, Abby, you want to come on up here? We got East Mountain Road paving bids. I'm going to give you the. Oh, oh the honor. All right. Well, the public works, right? So there's a sealed bid. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. They, they gave, gave it to me. <laughs> I came <laughs> in, they gave me a butter knife. Anything we suspect to be over 200,000 triggers sealed bid. Sealed bid that is only open in this setting. Yeah. Okay. And, and what we're going to do is we're not going to award a bid contingent upon verification that's a qualified bidder. Okay. So we'll read off what the bids are. Yeah. But then we got to go through to make sure that it matches the actual specs. Specs. Yeah. Specs yeah, yeah. Put yeah. Out yeah. And, uh, okay. And like timeline as well. Yeah. Okay. Agree with the timeline. Okay. So this, these are paving bids for paving on East Mountain Road from um, basically from Route Four to just past Roundabout Road. Um, total reclaim from Route Four to Mountain Road, um, and then a new base coat, and then three quarter inch from Route Four to Bear Mountain Road, and then they get from the ski bridge to Roundabout Road. Um, just a three quarter inch because we know that there are additional culverts and projects that need to happen in those sections, but we want to get it um, nice <laughs> and stabilized. <laughs> winter um those other projects will probably happen next year and then i left out the piece um from bear mountain road to the ski bridge because there's a large culvert there that um will get replaced this year and i did put in um the rfp that we might add to the bid okay. so if we do finish that before they pay then they can now, this is this including final pavement throughout, or is this one area? There that's will going still to be? be so. If we do additional, when I shouldn't say if <laughs> additional projects on East Mountain Road, um, then there will be patch paving in those spots that are disturbed, and then a final another three quarter inch on top of those. So there'll be one nice. Yeah, nice. Like, we we open up. This is all part of this is all part of our FEMA plan. This is all part of the flood recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> A uh, year and one day ago, last night. Oh, 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 was it? July 7th. <laughs> July 7th at about da, da, da. 5 o'clock. <laughs> Call me an hour later. You know? So this <laughs> one is Pike. No, I think watching the other night. Yeah, what do you think of that? Stainless steel. Never opened silk, did <laughs> That's why we're all staring. The, I've been at I've been at for the tip. Trying to things. No, the tip there. has been. This one is especially sealed. Yeah, Mike did a really good job. So there's three copies. Should be three copies of each. So you each can kind of look over if you want to read. Pike Industries would like the opportunity to work with you and quote the town's upcoming paving and reclamation. Road projects. The project we are quoting is East Mountain Road. We would anticipate being in town five days to complete the project. Um, it goes on to tell us about how Pike Industry and what they are. Our approach to the project would start with two days of reclamation, followed by three days of machine paving. Using would be applied between layers of asphalt at a rate of 0.25 to 0.03 gallons per square. 
Next will be state approved mixed designs of type two base and type four ship. Start date would be tentatively set for August 19th for reclaiming followed by paving beginning August 21st. So we will have um, August 19th, we will have the um, Killington Road open back again at that time. Our fee structure will be based on the price per ton for asphalt used by the weight slips provided to the town for every truck delivering our fees. Traffic control and signage will be done in accordance with part six of the MUTC. Uh, and they give us their qualifications, the bidding qualifications, similar projects they're giving to us. Yep. And on the last page, the second last page, they are coming in for the type four hot mix. Um, at 8349 a ton, anticipated 2318 for 193,000 Type 2 hot mix, 8349, 1322 tons, estimated at $110,373.78. And the reclaimed at $1.30 a yard, um, 20,466. 26,605.80. The traffic control is at a dollar and the mobilization is at a dollar. Total estimated cost is $330,511.40. And they have included their certificate of liability insurance, which I believe you have to make sure that. So once again, the next one we'll be opening up now looks like Wilk. Wilk. My niece just cut herself really well in oh, so no. Once again, saying thank you for the opportunity to submit a proposal for your upcoming paving project for a local supplier in Stola. I mix asphalt as a as our customer. You can expect high quality service. Um, they go through all their standards here. They talk on the second page about their projects completed. Proposed schedule would begin work on August 5th, 2024 and completed by August 14th, 2024. They give the scope of work and the type four hot mix, um, $82 per ton, and estimating 445, $36,490. Type two hot mix, uh, $78 per ton, estimating 2,350 tons. For 183,300. The reclaim square yards, 2.25 unit price for amount of um, 20,308 for $45,693. Their traffic control is at $19,000. Their mobilization is at 4,000, it looks like 650. For a total cost of $289,133. Um, we would need to see their insurance. Okay. So at the current time, the will paving at 289,133 looks to be the winning bid, but now it's up to Abby who wrote up the specs to come back to us in a couple of days, I believe it is. And you got to make sure that each one of these um, are um, for what the big was after the office. So, it's the same thing like in the tip when we were doing the difference for the water. Mm -hmm. you know, we go with the lowest and then we have to start <laughs> looking at or whatever. And, yeah. you know, I mean, for one you, thing here is really we've had both of these companies work in the town of Killington. As you can see in their uh, proposal, that a shell work on it. And I have never heard of a complaint about any. Oh, yeah, you know. 
So, um, yeah. great. Okay. Are you, are you uh, hold on one sec. You guys have any questions? I don't have any questions right now. Okay. Go ahead. Would we do low bid or most qualified better? We do low bid in this case because it's both of them have worked for the town of Kilmer. Okay. So both of these, Wilk and Pike, are both qualified. Okay. If it was all of a sudden someone else, then we'd have to start yeah. doing into looking into okay. it. But we're, we're, aware, we're aware, that's what I was getting at. We are aware of both of these companies, Wilk and Pike, and they're both local yep. companies. So um, we're okay. aware of it. Any other questions? Any questions online, Patrick or Karen? I'm not seeing any. But thanks a lot. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. Fire department report. Rich, you got anything to add? I'm mean, Craig. Yeah. I mean, what we call one of the most, most recent call I had was a hazmat incident from Mount Green. That's still kind of ongoing. We're trying to figure out where it was coming from. So I narrowed some stuff down. Other than that, I mean, keep training and moving on and bringing people on as they go along. So I got in front of me for the month of June total incidents of fire 10, EMS 15, both three. Total incidents year to date, 231. Calls to date at this time, 2000, from 2023, 203. <clears throat> the notable incident is the hazmat incident at Green Mountain. Training updates, three members are in advanced class. One member is attending basic EMT. Two members went to the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In-house training man hours for May, 329 hours. Apparatus and <coughs> equipment updates, rescue two still OOS out of service. Okay, researching of replacement. Ladder one is on limited use due to no ladder certification, but certification will be July 3rd in New York. It's July 8th. How'd it go? You passed flying colors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So why did he go out of certification? Just out of curiosity. It's a new truck. Uh, no, uh, every year the ladder has to be recertified. Okay. And with not having documentation from prior, I felt because I can't put somebody up on that ladder and have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a safety issue. So okay. we put it down until I could get it yep. certified. Okay. And we got station updates. And I'm just reading this for the public. Okay. Okay. We're all going to get the okay. You know, current roster is at 27. Jason Norton has accepted with captain position. Yes, he's waiting on contract from the town manager here and close the search for three more full time is waiting to do interviews. We got the contract. And you got the contract. Like I said, this thing said July yeah, yeah. 3rd. So <laughs> on the one. So um, does anybody in the public have anything or that you want to add something since you're part of the fire department? Rescue two. That's the excursion. Yes. I'm not surprised. We were putting that. It's, I mean, it's, it's the, 2008 time. Yeah. I heard it was the Flintstone thing. Like It, the, is. Yeah. it is. The floor is falling. So we got our money's worth. Thank you to the fire department. We got, we got our money's worth. Two questions. Sure. The first one is, why are we going with, a, with a, so much of a paid fire department when we had volunteer forever? What's the reasoning behind it? So the reason behind that is, is that we put it out to a vote and the voters had approved it. Um, we were told some three years ago that maybe it was four years ago that we could not get our trucks out on all the calls. That was from the Sherburne Volunteer Fire Department. They came to the select board, Chris and I and Steve Finner, and said they were not able to handle it anymore. I think it's actually in an email. Sure. And so the town had to take the next steps to figure out what. We used the volunteer fire department captain at the time, chief at the time, it was Gary. I forget last name right now, but Gary was yeah. Rob, Rob, and suggested and gave to Chet a schedule of how to move forward with a hybrid fire department. And um, the town select board then took that information. We held meetings with the Sherburne volunteer fire department offices 
and they all voted for us to move forward with it. And we did, and then we put it to the voters to approve, and they accepted it. And then we put it to the budget, and the voters accepted the budget. Okay. So that's what happened on question right. number Thank one. Thank you for educating me. And the second question I have for you is... Well, let's throw them to me oh. as the chair that's not oh, getting okay. into the... Uh, are all our firefighters at least level one firefighters? So can you give us an update on what levels we are and uh, of firefighters? So all my full-timers are level one and two. Uh, I've got a mix of the volunteers. Have, some have fire one, some have fire two. I, right now, I've got probably about, for level one and one, level two is, uh, I think about 10. But I'm working on getting, we all, State of Maryland does class once a year. So these new people that are coming on, I have to wait until now, I think it's like September for the closest class, which is Woodstock this, this time around. So um, whatever I can get in there, I can get in. You have about 10 level twos? Yeah. And how many level ones? Probably about three or four. Okay, so half of the fire department is at least um, fire one and two. And how many people have no level? Uh, probably right now, 16. And they're all going to the level one class? No, that's coming they are up. not. Uh, some, some don't want to do interior work because they don't, they're claustrophobic or whatnot. Uh, so I have other chores for them, like running a lot, running the ladder truck, running engines. So, I mean... We're a combination department volunteer, so therefore I can use people as I can, as they want to learn and open up. So I'm hearing about 13 are firefighter one at least, yeah. which is about where we were, I think, prior when we weren't getting trucks out the last two years when we were volunteer. Um, EMTs, I know, was another big one here, and I think we had like five or how many that be like five or six that were a certain advanced emt at the time back about three. five years ago yeah three you, david and no i'm not an i'm not oh an okay case. oh the amt was um <laughs> it was um uh steve yeah steve and denise denise coriel and and uh, <clears throat> um i don't remember what the third one was okay how many advanced EMTs do we have today on the myself, department? Two of us, myself and uh, Captain Bowman. And then, are there anyone in training for advanced EMTs? I've got yeah. three, and I've got three in training for that. Uh, Captain Foot, uh, uh, Firefighter Elliot, and Firefighter Mallory are taking their advance. Okay, and then how many um, EMTs not advanced? Uh, I think I've got three or four, but then I also have. Uh, what we call Vermont first responders. So they're what we used to call the emergency care attendant. Right. So they're the bottom line. They only can do certain things, but they're, they can go to calls. Yep. And so we're, we should be ahead of what we've had for the past five years. Once these classes end, yep. and one of the classes end for the three that are in class right now. Uh, the EMT or the, Band class will end, I believe it was October. Okay. Uh, the basic that I have, he should be same same time. So, okay. so we should be back up there. And uh, and also, all my full timers are cross trained. So, I, when they leave this mm -hmm. build, when we leave, except actually, except Captain Norton, he is going back to get his. Right. And then, since we're talking EMTs, um, Chief Witt. Um, you have on your department uh, paramedic, right? Or right, he decides to be up it. But yes, we want paramedic. But right now, currently, he is yes. a paramedic, yep. an EMT. Yeah, so, paramedic. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then new hiring that we have coming on. She's not an EMT. She's not an EMT at this time. Okay. His officer is also on my roster because of he's. Just throw them into the first response, right. and I do have one other paramedic on on my other ship. Okay, and then since we're talking, we're going to get into the police next. But the KSAR group, yes, 
you have any EMT on the case or are they all just case? Some cross members that are with the fire department are also part of case. Huh? Thanks a lot there. Okay, with, I think you have the next one for the report. Thank you. Department report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, month of June, 2024, total of 168 um, incidents, 62 cases, calls of service, 106. Year to date, um, from the first of the year till the end of June 2024, total incidents 1,312, 540 cases, calls of service 772, uh, compared to 23 uh, from the same time period, first of the year till June 30th, 1,191 cases, 531 calls for serve, uh, 531 cases with 660 calls for service. So that's about a 10%, 10.24% increase. From 23 to 24. Um, new hire, uh, Officer Kayla DeLorenzo starts tomorrow. Uh, she'll go through a training program with us and she's coming on board and we're looking forward to that. Um, so talking about recruitment retention, we'll have another slot available. So I've got some interest with uh, someone reached out to me today actually possibly for that. Uh, we're continuing directed patrols. Um, there's been a number of uptick in burglary and larceny cases, somewhat normal for this time of year due to a lot of the uh, vacant properties. Uh, 21 total KSAR members, team members, all uh, Wilderness First Aid certified. We had two call outs in the month of June, which went very well. And um, we're doing a kind of a large scale training program with the state coordinator, rescue coordinator, uh, Drew Clymer, uh, sometime later this summer. Yeah. It'll be both classroom and scenario based. Thanks. Yeah, hmm? questions. <laughs> <laughs> it was last time. Like you got. Questions by me. Thank you. No Any questions from the public? No, sir. Any questions from Zoom? Not seeing any. Our manager's report. Thank you, Jim. I just uh, I just did like a narrative here because you know as staff is growing, it has grown, um, and I've got very qualified department heads who are putting together very good reports, which is kind of looking back at mine. Um, I've been able to take a big step back and just allow them to give out the information. So I've just prepared a narrative here for you. Um, I'm not sure if I need to read it, but it is online if, if everybody would like it. Um, I, I guess I'll just kind of piggyback off what Chief Montgomery and Interim Chief Bowman had to say. You know, we've got two new, two new employees, um, and then we've also got another employee, Jack, um, who's, was Jack's last name? Rasmussen. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, and so his, his first day was at the transfer station, yeah. and um, Sarah said he really enjoyed it. He yeah. left. He left yeah. with a big smile on his face. Yeah. That's so, great. So that was really nice. Then, um, so he'll work from nine to one. He's got a helper with him, um, and Tuesday. So Monday he helps Jay at the uh, transfer station. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday he'll, he'll help Peter. Okay. Um, so that's that's the plan for Jack, and, and we'll adapt to his needs as we work with them. Uh, we said, um, you know, the, the last select board meeting or a few ago, we set the tax rate, uh, representative from, representative from um, Nimrick came in today and we put the tax bills together and we anticipate in mailing them out here next week. And um, we, we've been working we've, with VTEL very closely with the move, well, a few different uh, contractors with the move over to, um, the new town hall and and i sent out an email today because i, I would like a, a more clear timeline from them on when everything is going to be switched over to detail so that i can let new new horizons know that uh, we're all done and then i start that process so um yeah, that, anybody, is, that is a savings to the town absolutely and moving away from new horizons that contract we went into okay. um, so you understand that yes so uh yeah, you'll, so you'll get a financial report next select board meeting. You'll get a public works report. Um, 
and then I'll adapt this in any way you guys want. I, just, I think what you've done in the past is fine by me, just what you're working on and okay. projects are great. <clears throat> I think it would be great to have, you know, like one meeting police and fire and the next one be. We continue like this, the first of them is going to give us yeah. any updates and you and Craig are here. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, Abby's here for the opening of the bid today, but yeah. You know, Abby and uh, Mary Ellen coming in on the finance and on the um, public public works part. You know, we go from there. Yep. And, uh, I'm still sure that there's, that there's going to be more of, you know, they've got that, but you've got other stuff in here, like in this thing here, you know, those $47 million infrastructure upgrades that are on the way. Yeah. You know, um, you know meeting last week or whatever to say that we received the $25 million, you know, grant award in 30 days until mm -hmm. um, we get some documents to start signing or whatever, but that's going to get us going on the rest of the Killington road. And, you know, we, you know, we, we, I don't know if anybody knows this, but you know, that 25 million really gives us a jump start on, um, from the lookout down to um, Anthony Way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I, I think it's given us two or three years um, jump on where we were by, you know, Lisa going out, working with BHP and mm -hmm. Abby and everyone else and getting that thing going for that grant process. And, um, you know, we're going to get moving. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Well, and we're not letting other things fall through the crack. You know, we're still moving forward on a recreation yeah. plan. You right. Know? I mean, you yeah. know, there's a lot of things. Charging. There's a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, um, <coughs> contract four, you know, it's not in the report, but it's saying and moving forward with it. But we have contract four for the water line that's going to go from East Mountain Road down to Ravine Road. And that's going out to bid within 10 days. Yeah, I'm pretty sure within 10 days we're going to put that <laughs> I out. I actually thought bid. we'd get bids back in mid-August today, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so so we'll go out. So there's a lot of stuff going on in town, and, um, you know, we just got to keep on moving forward. Reappraisal. Apparently yeah, they're on some kind of reappraisal circuit. Right. So I think they're having, the listers are having a meeting July mm -hmm. 23rd? Was it 25th? 25th, I think. 25th? I think. Yeah. yeah, they're having a meeting on July 25th to go over the reappraisal process. So there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of good stuff going on. So um, then I think even, and we've got open public comments. So um, Don, I think you're the only one here. And then there's people on Zoom. Oh, sure. Okay. So um, I've got Patrick Cushion and Karen Moran. If you want to say something here at the end of the meeting, uh, I do have a question for Patrick Cushing. Uh, are, is there any moves being made to do audio and video recordings of the special and emergency meetings so that we're in compliance with the uh, open law or yeah, open meeting law? So as on always, the town website. this afternoon, even though we were going into executive session and July one has passed, um, we do have the we did take a recording of us opening the meeting. And going through the process and then coming out and going from the current. Um, I believe we have like two or three days to get it up onto the website. So, we'll yeah, you have quite in. a few. I think it's yeah, after it's the agenda gets um, approved, then you have to put it up for 30 days or something. So, we put it out, but we also have to have um, once the draft minutes are done and the draft minutes stay until um, the draft minutes have to be put up within five days. And then after that, um, they're taken down 30 days after we actually approve them. So the minutes that were done before today or before July 1 or whatever, if it was now, then they would be still staying up since we approved them for another 30 days before we um, would take the video down. And um, the minutes are, we've always have our minutes up for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No question. Is just about the um the audio video. It sounds like you guys are on top of it. Thank you. Yeah. 
we got this new cool TV and system now. So I'll tell you, it looks a, it looks a lot better on this end. Yeah. So, any other questions, Patrick? Nope, that's it. And um, I see Kevin, our road foreman's on. I mean, I hate to. You have anything you want to throw in, Kevin? No, I think I'm all set. I mean, just progress still on Thundering Brook and whatnot, but um, that's really it. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so, other business, I see that we have a Killington Board of Selectmen from Killington Board of Listers, subject Great, great Golf Killington, GG Killington LT. The following parcels, number 100. 394, 10669, 13165, and 13891 were owned by SP Land and were sold to GG Killington LP. They were not shown in any of the transfer documents recorded in the town office, which the listers used to transfer ownership in our grand list program. As a result, the listers did not show the transfer, and those tax bills were sent to SP Land and subsequently not paid. The listers have corrected the grand list to reflect the new owners as GG Killington LP. The error was done by the listers and not by GG Killington LP. The listers recommend that the interest and penalties assessed against the parcels be waived. Can I get a motion to accept the listers recommendation? What is, do we have any idea what the amount of money is? I saw the list. It's about $10,000 worth of Principal. I think I wrote money. Um, I don't think it's that much. I think it's like six hundred and sixty-four dollars. I thought there was one of them for like four grand. And oh, really? I didn't do that. I saw about ten grand. So, um, either way, it was it, it, it was because the transfer. I would just like to throw on here that we finally put the bill correctly to GG Killington LP. And that we tell them that this bill is due within 30 days yeah. for penalties and interest. We'll, we'll start accruing that. We understand that there was a mistake, but they need to get this thing paid. In 30 yeah, days. we've known about it for quite a while. It's just kind of getting this the ball rolling. rolling. Yeah. So, can I get a motion to accept the lister's recommendation for these one, two, three, four yeah. properties? I would make a motion that we accept the. Uh, the recommendations right. of the listers and that we waive all interest and penalties. And then just the bill, the bill has days. to be paid within mm -hmm. 30 days. Yeah. Got a second, Rob? Second. All in favor? All right. We need to sign this. <laughs> so, is there any other business? Um, just need to go on the big executive session, talk about personnel. And since we got Don here, stop. no, really, <laughs> I took a ride because I went to uh, right. a service yesterday. And I know it's, and I finally took a ride up there and I did. Blah, 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 blah. So, Summit Path Road. Summit Road goes Summit. from Killington Road right up, okay, okay. to the corner. Okay. At which point it goes to summit path to the summit. So when and I drive January up January way it goes from the corner of summit path and summit road down her way. Okay. So when I drive up and the first on the right is the ice cream store. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a driveway off of summit road. road. Okay. And that's a driveway. Then the next I drive up, I think is your driveway. That is correct. And it's a it's just a driveway and it's one house. Mm -hmm. So you are off of Summit Road. Road. That's your address from Killington Road to your driveway should be a number. That's off of Summit. Then to the it left should be assigned a 911. It should be assigned 911 and it should have whatever it is from Killington Road to your driveway is Summit Road, okay? And then to the left, after his, is the foundry, okay? So this is the Google Maps. That's exactly right. Summit Road, there is a summit pathway, and 
Um, this is where Emmett got involved. Remember, we had Chet flipped it. Okay. Yeah. Summit Pass did go at one point from the January way up. Okay. Right. And um, it, I, it has been forever confusing because not only they named it one point, it was Summit Pass. Then um, and the licensing for the foundry when I bought it was all screwed up. And so they sometimes had a list as 200 Killington Road, which it's not on Killington Road. But anyway, um, and it was, but the pathway went from that corner to the summit. Was I'm just term. making sure that because I know it comes up a but lot. Then he I, changed. And it, no, no. And it was confusing because January way. And I know we had a conversation one time in the office. And I was like, well, how many houses on that road or whatever? And I was thinking when you said four, that your house was on there. But when I finally went up to take a look the other day, January Way has three houses on it, I believe. Three structures. Three structures. And 911 um, code, Abby, 911, if once there's more than two, it becomes a private road or a road. The name you have to name it. Trisha Carter, who's been here longer probably than anybody in this room, correct? Okay. She bought that, she built that house, and it was 76 Summit Path. Okay. And all the records yep. in the town. It's right. 76 Summit Path. I'm not gonna argue with you. So that's my address. Summit Path. And but there was a time period. This is involving Chet, and all of a sudden they wanted to get rid of the confusion. And we went, I'm like, I had always understood the summit path when I bought the property, all, both parcels on either side of the road. Then all of a sudden, it went to Emmett came in. Remember, he was all mad and he was throwing his fist down and going, hey, I, this is my Google address and this is my marketing. Da, 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 it's my road. And technically speaking, that road is owned by Emmett, you, and me. Okay, that you have a piece of property that goes all the way to Killington Road. I don't know if you know it. No, I forget I have an easement. No, you have up there is a piece of property. Okay. Okay. That goes through there. And it's a, and it was well, always it's not too much now. <laughs> the liability we all have. Listen, I'm, I'm a wealth of history. <laughs> Trisha did that. It was done that way back in case that your property was ever going to be a business and they could have a sign on the road. That's why they did it. That is all private property. And Emmett does own the roadway, though, coming. So we have pieces that go down, but the roadway itself is owned by Emmett. Okay. That so, I agree. And when they changed the road, I felt I didn't ask him to change the road. I felt bad that he that he that they did that to him. I thought they They didn't him. do it to him. He this is what he wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. We went back and all of a sudden it became Chet just was trying to clean it up. And he says, what is it? We sat in a meeting. I go, I've always known it's Summit Path. So we just said, because that's what I was told I bought. Okay. Then all of a sudden, we went Summit Path. Okay. Summit Path, boom, sign it. Next thing you know, he comes in screaming and hollering and threatening. If you look at the sign at the water wheel, at the map, mm -hmm. I go to get my coffee and mm -hmm. sandwich in the morning. It says there, Summit Path. <laughs> I know. I made it. I made that. That's why. <laughs> but the point is, is like, so he actually owns that road. Okay, we all have slivers that go down to it in the way that you got to also understand, too. The foundry was subdivided off of the summit parcel originally, too. That was one big parcel. But I'm trying to end this. The January way goes from the is, way. is 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 the it was a driveway when it was like one house. If it was one or two house structures, the minute it goes to three, then it can have a name to it. Okay. So that driveway became January Way. She has nothing to do with the foundry driveway off of Summit Road, nothing to do with Mad Hatter's driveway off, and nothing to do with yours. What I'm hearing is Summit Path. Are we okay with Summit Road? Me? Yeah. No. No. And that's, that's the issue that you're bringing up. Yes. We you don't think it should have be Summit It's not a town road. Right. So that's. So to us, that came somewhere. I got us off of January way. Okay. You take it up with your other folks. <laughs> you can't. 
He but doesn't. Not, we oh, we have an just e, not, when they change when they change right away. He has ownership, right? He has ownership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ownership. Yeah, so we yeah. named it Summit Road. So when they changed January <laughs> Summit Path to January Way, that dropped mm -hmm. hours. That wasn't. That was not Summit Path. That was not named. She couldn't get delivery there for FedEx or anybody to go there because it wasn't named. So she put this all together, put the name to it, it's January Way. Okay. And January Way has always only been from Summit Road now that used to be Summit yeah. Path or Summit whatever, talk to whoever. But January Way is always just that driveway that goes off of Summit Road now. So, because it has three structures. Go ahead, Abby. So does the sign at the street say Summit Path? Nope. Summit it's not a town sign. It's his sign. It's Summit. But, but Abby's asking, but, what does the private road sign say? It says Summit Road, because he put it up. Okay. We don't have control of it. We don't <laughs> so, so I'm going to put on the front of my driveway, where I just cleaned out, I'm going to put some path. path. Yeah. yeah, you can do it. But that's what, that's what the town records say. That's what it's been since 80-something, when she built the house. Yeah, that's yeah, what but, I mean, that's we, what you recorded it as. We could go back to that. Um, uh, you kept Brook, Rory you Brook, didn't call Brook, it Emmett East Road, or whatever. <laughs> you know, East Mountain Road used to be Roaring Brook, I think, I know, or yeah. whatever. I mean, things was changed. East. I was always when you were coming to me. I was said I would look into it, and I was finally up in that area to, to take. I went up there one time for a permit thing, but I wasn't thinking about that. And I went the other day because I had some time. And then I'm looking down at January way. And I understand why she was able to get her road turned to January way because it has three structures. So if you want to name yours Don's path, I want to do that. you just have to, <laughs> no, you just need two more structures because 911 <laughs> says then you have to do it. So I guess January was basically forced to make a name of a road because of 911 rules. So I just wanted to bring it up because I finally got time to, to look at it. All right. I got a whole different sign up there. You, it's your private driveway, so and it's off of a private road. So if you want to put something there, this board has nothing to do with it. Yeah. We'll do that. We do it to you, Chris, because it would be bad for your business. We still have some. Yes, it is. still say if you look at our marketing, there's a ton of it. There says 63 Summit Path. You could and, put and anti, as far as you could put anti LL thinks on 200 Killington Road, I can't get them to change that. Right. They just license the place to 200 Killington Road. Yeah. You know. so, all right. Hey, we, we got somewhere. It's not, you, you're definitely not, you got Summit. I know. He didn't change it. He didn't change it to Emmett. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. It's Emmett. Emmett's road. I own a, now I found that I own a sliver. What is it, six inches wide? It is the tiniest. It's that big. <laughs> it, is, it is the tiniest piece. It's a flag-shaped block. And it was designed that way. I mean, you could you step over it. You know what I mean? But About the size of a mini flag. Designed that way so, you could, so the sign could actually be on the road way back. I can put a sign out there if I want. If you're a business. If you were a business. Come on, it's $225 for a permit. <laughs> $30 for uh, recording. <laughs> you can get a little Don's Path. <laughs> so, okay. Um, executive session for um, uh, personnel and contracts. At 756. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, come on in for contracts. Kevin's in too. Okay. Thanks a lot. Stop recording. <laughs> Uh, motion to come out of executive session at 918. No action taken. Can I get a motion to adjourn, Chris? Motion to adjourn. Robert, can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.